Hello everybody! Sorry, just finishing off my Patrice Severus uh, impersonation there. Welcome to the Daily Splat. It's the day after the big match between Manchester United and Liverpool, a game in which Manchester United won 2-1, focusing purely on the game itself in this first bit before moving on to the uh, other issues. A well-deserved win for Manchester United. They played Liverpool off the park. They were tremendous. Liverpool tried to implement the same game plan which proved to be successful for them at Anfield. Um, it didn't quite work though, obviously Old Trafford being a bit of a bigger pitch offers uh, more opportunities for the wide players and United just controlled the game, they played the ball really really well and um, defensively they were good. Uh, Johnny Evans had possibly his best game in a United shirt and that is you know, a big, uh, a big thing for me to say because I'm not his biggest fan but that was a tremendously good performance from him. Um, obviously Wayne Rooney getting the two goals doing what he needed to do but for me the man of the match had to be Danny Welbeck. He was outstanding. He was just so good. He, he I mean he was the, the odd chance he got he was a little bit wasteful but his ability to just hook the ball out of the air, his tenaciousness in chasing down the ball off the Liverpool centre-backs he was absolutely brilliant, and he, he had the right attitude throughout the whole game. Now, the other bit, uh, the Suarez Everett business. Um, I think a lot of people, after this match, came to the conclusion that Luis Suarez is a bit of a, a fill-your-own word in there. Some people went with the C word. Um, I'd go with Dick. He's, he's just... Or oh, prick, you know, something of that nature. Um, he was just reprehensible in his in his behaviour. You know, before the match, Everett had said, you know, I'm going to shake hands, you know, I'm going to be the bigger man, just shake hands, get it over with. Suarez, no, just misses over him. Suarez, you are not the victim here, okay? You shouldn't be, as much as he's tried to make himself a victim, you are not the victim. You were found guilty of using racially abusive language against another player. Okay. If anything, it's Everett's decision whether you shake hands or not. Everett chose he wanted to. The fact that you tried to not shake hands with him is just abysmal behaviour from a reprehensible little rat. Also, he didn't have a very good game. Uh, the goal aside, which he did take well, um, that you know, it wasn't from him winning the ball. It was just pinged off Rio Ferdinand in front of him. Um, yeah, and he was just, he was just pathetic. Um, some people might say the every, you know, celebrations at the end could have antagonised him or wound him up, but to be honest, Patrice Sevra has the right to celebrate his side winning a big game, particularly given all the personal stuff he's been through at his own home ground. If he'd done it at Anfield, I agree, that could have been uh, problem-causing. You're allowed to do it in your own stadium, and the thing is, yeah, I know he went past Suarez, but he was running around wildly. I don't think he did it deliberately. Um, and also, Suarez didn't even register him. You know, Suarez was too busy walking off, you know, looking fed up and hopefully ashamed of himself. Evra's run past going, yeah, you know, facing the, um, you know, the United fans at that end of the ground, just going, yeah, and stuff like that. You know, the fact he's run past Suarez... I'm not sure if that was registered in him. You know, he hasn't done anything directly to Suarez. The referees come over to try and move him away, and then obviously all the Liverpool players notice, and they go over. Suarez just walks off, and eventually the Liverpool players are ushered off. I think Patrice ever had every right to celebrate in that way, although it was slightly irresponsible. Um, that admittedly it is slightly irresponsible, but it, at Old Trafford, in front of 70 odd thousand of his own fans, he's allowed, I would say, he can, he's allowed to express his happiness. And to be honest, I'd want all of the United players to be celebrating wildly. You know, this is Liverpool they've just beaten. Admittedly, they're not any good anymore, but they are still United's main rivals. Not, not in terms of silverware, obviously that's now Manchester City, Tottenham, you know, those, those teams. But in terms of, you know, the history, it's it's United Liverpool all the way. And, you know, I felt like jumping around and, and doing, <laughs> doing all that business after the full-time whistle. I was more relieved than anything, but there you go.
Anyway, uh, they are my thoughts on the United Liverpool match. Uh, to hear more of these thoughts, you can uh, tune in if you're in the uh, Perth metro area uh, to 89.7 FM, uh, a local radio station, uh, Twin Cities FM, between 4 in the afternoon and 6 in the afternoon on Tuesdays to hear The Funny Old Game, which is a football radio show that I host with a few friends who are also very passionate football people. Um, also, if you don't live in the Perth metro area, you can listen to it online. Just look for 89 points, just look for 897FM, so 897FM.com.au, or just Google Twin Cities FM and you'll get the website. Actually, the website might be Twin Cities. You know what? <laughs> I think I've got the website wrong. Just Google Twin Cities FM, 897FM. You'll find it in the Google search and you can listen live wherever you are in the world. So uh, feel free to do that if you want. Or don't, you know, some of you might not like football or FM radio. It's up to you. Okay, that is all from me today. Thank you for listening, and I will be back tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye. This is the third time this week I've missed the button. Hmm. I've got the same finger-to-button conversion rate as Liverpool's shot-to-goal conversion rate. <laughs> bye.